All right, so some changing geopolitical tides. Meanwhile, in Turkey, the government of current Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan is in turmoil after a corruption scandal erupted and the Prime Minister accused of firing law enforcement officials to prevent his own implication. Cenk Sidar is the managing director of Sidar Global Advisors and a former director of the American Turkish Council. He's been following the impact this is having on confidence in Turkey's markets. Cenk, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Kelly. You know, Turkey is often mentioned as one of the fragile five, the bits that investors are worried about, to use the acronym. Uh, why should the guys who say that Turkey's headed for a crisis in 2014 rethink that point of view? Uh, Turkey has been going through turbulent times for the corruption proof starting December 17, and it seems like it's not going to be isolated or contained at the level that it is right now. Uh, if there will be uh, objective investigation going on, uh, it's probably going to reach the upper uh, circles in Turkish politics and Erdogan and his inner circle. So I think it's safe to say that if uh, before everything gets uh, better in Turkey, it's going to even get worse in the short term. And investors are going to want to know if this political crisis does worsen. What does that mean for a country like Turkey, which is so dependent on foreign funding of its deficit? Yes, the deficit isn't as large as some other countries, but it, it is reliant on foreign funding, and a lot of that, a lot of those funds are short term. Exactly. Uh, Turkey's growth has been fueled by capital inflows uh, last uh, 10 years. So when there was a, a global liquidity uh, in, the, in the world market, so it was easy to finance Turkey's growth. And recently we see, we witnessed a, a significant capital outflows started with the increase in political risk in Turkey. Uh, Turkish lira uh, lost its 20% value uh, since uh, in 2013 and stock market lost more than 30%. So it seems Seems like there will be some financing problems in Turkey, especially when the short-term debt, the corporate debt, is very high, and two-fifths of the corporate debt is uh, in foreign exchanges. And this sounds like a place that only super savvy investors or those who think they have an edge when it comes to Turkey should play then, because it's also another reason why a lot of people looking at emerging markets or a Turkey, for example, as an opportunity in 2014 should really pause. Uh, uh, exactly. The emerging markets are uh, on the spotlight in 2014, but again, the political risk is going to determine if the investment is going to be profitable for these markets. So when we see increasing political risk in the emerging markets uh, group, I will say I will say it's even uh, it will be a safe bet to uh, to uh, focus on the developed markets for 2014 because okay. uh, because it's even going to uh, have more po political risk coming from the fragile five as you mentioned earlier. And would your, in just a word, predict, uh, Cenk, your prediction for 2014 for this space and for Turkey would be? Uh, Turkey will be going through turbulent times. Uh, most likely, uh, the Prime Minister Erdogan will call early elections in 2014. Turkey has already two scheduled elections, one local and one presidential. So it's very, it's very uh, likely that there will be a third parliamentary elections. And actually, without the parliamentary elections in Turkey, it will be very difficult for Turkish government or Turkish uh, economy to nav navigate through this political gridlock and uh, global economic challenges imposing from outside. Uh, yeah. So I will say they, they're going to be very uh, exciting year for Turkish politics in 2014. <laughs> exciting is one way to put it. Fireworks <laughs> for sure. Cenk Sidar, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Your tweets have been coming in fast and furious. Meanwhile, we've been going.